feel it goes into the stereotypical ways of our people, right? And all the other nations, when they see us, they mock us because they know something that we don't know about ourselves. Do you know what that is? They know something about us that we don't know about ourselves. Get that in there, dude. Watch this. Listen to this, sis. And I want to explain to you why we out here, okay? Because I want you to feel like, you know, we're picking on you. We come out here all the time and we bring the word of God to our people because you know what? This word has not been taught to us properly. Our parents never taught it to us. The church has never taught it to us. We weren't taught right in the school system, okay? So we have to come out here and bring life and hope to our people. And this is where you're going to find it. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Read that again. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So when it says thou and thy, those are pronouns, right? right. Which means though that, that's personal that God is speaking to a certain people. Read it again. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord is not saying everybody, okay? So now we gotta look at some identifying markers, right? Now I want you to see some, so I don't know. Are you familiar with any of these images right here? Have you seen any of these images maybe in, in textbooks or in movies? Anything like that? You ever seen like uh, Django? Or 12 Years a Slave, or any, any like slave movies? You seen them? So, so would any of these images depict what we've seen in the slave movies? Who are the slaves? Are they white people? Are they East Indian people? Are they Asian people? Or are they us? When you see those movies, who do you see depicted as slaves? You see us, right? Yeah, you see us depicted as the slaves, right? All right, drop that. Give me, uh, give me uh, uh, Jeremiah 2.14. I'm going to explain to you why I'm going there and, and why I asked you if you're happy with the condition of our people. Because God said we are holy people unto him. Why are we on the bottom then? If God said we're holy unto him, why are we on the bottom? Why are we not living in the best places? Why are we not making laws and, 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 um, and, and ruling the government? Why don't you have women serving you like your foremothers did? We don't even think of that. We don't even think about those things because we are so far removed from understanding that we great people that we will be satisfied in the condition we're in. Read what you got. Sir. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 14. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? So it says, is Israel a servant? Now, you might not understand what that means. Do you see yourself or your father anywhere on this chart? Read that again. Watch this. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 14. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Okay, where'd you say you see yourself, sis? Your dad is black. Okay, so so-called African American, right? Right. Now, the so-called African Americans in history, how often has our name been changed here in America? Do you know? Okay, so for instance, like when we got off the slave ships, we were Negroes. In the 60s, we were colored. In the 70s and 80s, we were Afro-Americans. Then we became African-Americans. Why does our name keep changing? Give me that Deuteronomy 28, 37. Do you know why? It could be a good thing. So if you lost your way home, the comfort and safety of your home, if you lost your way home and you went into a stranger's house that started to abuse you, would that be a good thing? And they renamed you, would that be a good thing? 
And they made you forget about your family and all the people that cared about you. Would that be a good thing? No. So this is not a good thing. I'm going to show you what has happened to us and why we're on the bottom and what we have to do to correct the situation. Come on over, Sister Reed. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 37. And I'm going to tell you something. See, this is, this is the glory of the Lord. We're teaching a young woman, and now an older woman, an aged woman, comes over here, and this is a beautiful thing right here. Come on up, sis, because what we're going over is who we truly are, why we don't know this, and why we, why we settle for the conditions of our community. Did you know we are the Israelites? Did you know that? Did you know we are the Israelites? You didn't know that? And I'm, I'm showing my sister. We are the Israelites because, look, I'm going to show you the same thing that I just showed her. Look at this sign right here. This side is what God calls us. These are the names you read in the Bible. Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad. You read that in the Bible. These names, African American, West Indies, Haitians, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Dominicans. We don't read that in the Bible. Those are the names that we got when we were enslaved, renamed, and reclassified. Okay, does that make sense? Oh, yes. Who do we know of today that that happened to? What people did that happen to? Uh, us? Then we was colored. Wait a minute. Then we was black. Now we African American. We don't know what we are. Did you, now, didn't I just go over there with you? And she wasn't even here. So that's the spirit that I want to show you that this is a true book and that the spirit of the Lord is going to reveal these things because since you got an opportunity to repent and make better for yourself, right? Would you like to be in a better position in your life? Okay, so we're gonna help you. If you be patient, we're gonna help you, all right? Is that cool? Okay, what was you saying, sis? What were you saying? You, you said that, that we've been renamed, right? Go ahead. Right, right. You see that? You see that? Now check this out. I want you to hear this clearly, sis, because I want to I wanna get into the connection a sister like you are supposed to have with a younger sister like her. Because the reason a lot of our younger sisters don't know their way and their proper place in, in society and their proper place within our communities is because what? The older women ain't teaching them no more. Listen to this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 37. Uh -huh. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations. Among who? Among all nations. So no matter where you go on the planet Earth, no matter what people are here in America that are outside of our nation, that's our nation, those 12 tribes. Guess what? They got, they got slick sayings that they call us. Are you familiar with some of them slick sayings they call us? Is? Okay. So not only would they call us niggas, uh, back in the older days they would call us porch monkeys, spicks, and things of that nature, but today they call us baby mamas, baby daddies, thoughts, things of that nature. Right? You familiar with terms like that? What sister, as a child, grows up and says, you know what, when I grow up, I want to be a thought? Who says that? Have you ever heard a young girl say that, sis? That, that, in her, that's, that is where she's going to achieve success in her life, is by becoming a thought. What about you, Grandma? Have you ever heard any young women grow up and say, I want to be a hoe when I grow up? Right. So then, how do we stop that from happening? Read that again, though. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. So all nations will call us by different names. They'll have wise sayings about us, derogatory sayings about us. Every last nation. You understand? So now, how do we correct that in our communities? How do we correct that? 
By what? We need to teach our children better. By teaching our children better. You're absolutely right. So now, any, you ever heard the term, it takes a village to raise a child? Where's the village teaching our young ladies? Turn around, look at that store right there. What is that? Check. Beauty Exchange Supply. Who runs that store? Right? Now, who is the first author of beauty? They're telling us what beauty looks like, but where does beauty really come from? Where does beauty really come from? Do you know? On the inside? Do you know? Beauty. Yeah. I like that answer. We're going to address that too. I like that answer. Where, do you, where does beauty come from? Oh yeah, I know, I gotta go. She's standing there, she's going in. Probably. Let me ask it this way. If our women felt beautiful in their natural state, why would they be going to a beauty supply store that another nation that can whoop their ass inside the store and get away with it and we keep going back to their store? Has that not happened? Have you not seen any of the stories of what's happened to our sisters in these stories? You've never seen where you've seen some, haven't you? There was a sister that the husband and wife, they down there beat her ass in the store. They accused her of stealing. Oh yeah, they got just like Hawk to it. Not only that, not only that, sis. Hold on, I know you got to go. waiting on me. Not only that, but hold on. I want I want to share something with you before you go. It might change your life. Not only that, but a few years ago, um, uh, a sister got beat down. The black man went out there to stand and support against the owner of the store. You know what he did? He cut the price of weave in half. What do women do? Say, get out the way, black man. I'm going back in the store. Now, hold on, sis, before you go, before you go, because you're going to go in that store? Okay, hold on a second. Now, I said, the, the, you, you said it. The older women got to teach the younger women, right? Here's one of the things you got to teach. Give me that in, um, no, no, give me the Sabbath. Give me the Sabbath. Give me Nehemiah. Bring it up. You go to church? Okay. And what they teach? Baptist. Did the Baptist ever teach you about God's Sabbath day? God's Sabbath day. The holy day God gave to, as a covenant between him and his people. Did they ever teach you about that? Okay. Do you know one of the penalties for breaking the Sabbath day, according to God? Death. I'm going to read it to you. Read it to you. Listen to this. This is why we need Christ. And I'm going to show you. Read. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10 and verse 31. And if the people of the land bring ware or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them Wait a minute, read that again on the Sabbath day? That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. So we are not supposed to buy and sell on the Sabbath day. At this time, what was happening is the other nations were bringing their wares, their food, and, and clothing and other goods into Jerusalem to sell us so that we would break God's Sabbath day. Our pastors and our religious institutions in Christianity have not told us that. They have not uh, um, taught us that, which is one of the reasons you see our neighborhood, you see our nation in the condition it's in now. We are broken down. So how would you get that knowledge? Because the prophet's gotta come out in the street and bring it back to the people. Do you pay tithes? You pay tithes in the church, Okay, but, but you say not only money, which means money is a part of it, right? Can, so, but can you find one scripture in the Bible that says give the pastor 10% of your money? No, you don't think so. But wait a minute. You still do it, though, right? No, not 10%. He always said, though. You pay tithes. Your time and all that counting. Okay. Even if you had no money. That's called alms. The Christian church teaches tithing. Okay? 
which is what a lot of our people do, which is why you recognize that. Our, these religious institutions are teaching us lies. This is why, for instance, I'm gonna give you an example of our women, the things that an older woman like you should know and should be teaching a younger woman like my sister here. Give me that in Deuteronomy. Give me that in Deuteronomy 22. It's high time that our people wake up and understand what salvation is and how to gain salvation. And you must gain salvation by repenting as an Israelite and coming back to God's commandments. Because other than that, Christ said there's death for you. Listen, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman. The what? The woman. You're a woman. You're a woman. This applies to you. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What's a woman's garment? What's a woman's garment? Tyler Perry, when he plays Medea, wears one all the time. What's a woman's garment? What's a woman's garment, young man? You don't know? Clothing? Clothing that a woman? What's your mom and grandma wear when they go to church? What? Dresses! Now how is it that you knew when I said that? Because you're used to seeing them when they go to dress, dress up. I mean, when they go to church, dress up in a dress, right? Oh, oh so your pastor said men dress like men, women dress like women? So then listen, this is where he got it from. We, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So we agree that a woman's garment is a dress. Yes? Yes? So it say a man ain't supposed to wear a dress. So what a man supposed to be wearing? Huh? That, wait a minute. So men aren't the boss? They used to be. Who changed that? That's feminism, right? That's feminism. That's for the other nations. That's not for you. That's not for her. That's why we on the bottom. That's another God. You say, you say that a woman should not. Listen to this. This is what God said. Give me that Jeremiah 31, 22. Because this is why our churches have failed us. And our women are out of control. They don't know what their, what their God-given responsibilities as a woman are. Our men don't know their God-given responsibilities as a man is. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31 and verse 22. How long wilt thou go about? Oh, thou backsliding daughter. So backsliding is a term we hear in the church. What's that mean, sis? We in the midst of what? Slipping. Okay, so meaning we in the midst of what? Sin. We in the midst of sin. Read it again. How long wilt thou go about? Oh, thou backsliding daughter. You sinful people. Read. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. So it says the Lord created a new thing in the earth. Meaning this is not what he established from the beginning, read. In the earth, a woman shall come past a man. A woman shall what? Shall come past a man. You know what we're reading in the Bible? Feminism. The beautiful thing is the Lord will bring, um, I call them props, like you, you've seen a movie before, like when they got pictures on the walls and things of that nature, they call props. So the Lord brought the sister up, 
right? An aged sister. This is a sister that could be your mother or grandmother, right? Now, she acknowledged that they're supposed to be teaching y'all, right? How do you teach? Give me two ways that you can teach somebody something. You got a daughter, right? Two ways you can teach your daughter something. What's the first? You tell her. You tell her. Whatever it is that you're trying to teach her, you express it verbally, right? What's the other way? Through your what? Through your actions, right? Now, did we just not read that women ain't supposed to dress like men? Did we read that? Did she just not say her pastor even said that? She acknowledged her pastor said that, so guess what? That means she knows it to be true, right? Listen to what God said. And then she said, no, I don't want to say pants, because that would make the man the boss or the lead. Who do you think God set upon the earth to be the leaders? Do you know? You said, you said it depends? I don't disagree with that, but it doesn't say that. It said, I'm gonna read it to you. I'm gonna read it to you. I agree with what you're saying, and we're gonna and we're gonna touch that because you're, you're absolutely right. Read. Book of Numbers, chapter 27 and verse 16. Yeah. Let the Lord, the God of all the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. Said who? A man over the congregation. Who's supposed to be leading in the nation? Who's supposed to be the leaders? The man, right? Do you think she doesn't know that? She acknowledges she knows that. So when we look at our sisters and we look at our sisters out of order, we ain't got to look far. Because guess what? The women that's supposed to be teaching you, guess what they've done? They failed you. Titus 2 and 3. Yeah. Titus 2 and 3. And, what, and, and the society we live in today which is what uh, the officer was asking you a little earlier about women taking on responsibilities. Titus. Um, our women do not like to be accountable for their actions. They will always point the finger and tell the black man he's got to be accountable for himself. But our black women today do not like to be accountable for their actions. Do you agree or no? And if you don't agree, can you give me at least one example to say otherwise? And while you're thinking, I'm going to read the scripture for you. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 3. The aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. So now that was an aged woman. That's why I asked her. God says her behavior should be holiness. Listen to the spirits or the attributes of an aged woman that professes holiness. Not false accusers. So she can't be a liar or falsely accusing people of things. Not given to much wine. She can't be a drunkard. Go ahead. Teachers of good things. Teachers of God's laws because the good things that she's supposed to teach is the commandments to the younger sisters. Read. That they may teach the young women. What are the aged women supposed to do? Teach the young women. You aged women out here that have failed the younger women in the community. God said you're supposed to teach the young women. Read to be sober. So her actions are supposed to teach you to be sober like her. Read. To love their husband. She, as an example, is supposed to teach you how to love your husband. Does that say baby daddy? To love their husband. Does that say boyfriend? Love their husbands. Because God didn't deal with that. God don't honor nothing but marriage. You understand, sis? Read. To love their husbands. To love their children. To do what? To love their children. That's a problem in our community too. Do you know that to be true or not? Black women and their children. Are there not a numerous um, examples of how the black woman has abused her children? Do we have examples like that in the community, sis? Abuse them. I'm gonna give you an example. Black woman has a child by a man she don't like. Yes. I'm going to put you on Facebook, nigga, 
and let you watch me abuse or even kill your baby. This happens in our community. You understand that, sis? But the age woman is supposed to be teaching you so we don't get to this point. Read. That they may teach the young women to be sober, uh -huh. to love their husbands, uh -huh. to love their children, Read. to be discreet. To be what? Discreet. That's why the brother was going over how you dress. To be discreet. Because you know what? You know what you do? And if you never heard this before, that's fine. You're hearing it now, so just change. You understand? Just change. You lower your value in the man's eyes. Read that again. To be discreet. To be discreet. Because a lot of a lot of us got daughters. I got daughters, I'm sure, older than you. Right? I'm gonna show you something when it says to be discreet. Give me that in Sirach chapter 7, verse 24. That what it is, Sirach 7, 24. This is how important, and then I want 42 and 10. This is how important a father thinks on his daughter. So when the mothers run away the father from the household, they run the protection away for their daughters. Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 7 and verse 24. Has thou daughters? Have a care of their body. So it says, do you have daughters? Read verse 23 first. Verse 23, hast thou children? Instruct them. Do what? Instruct them. So the first thing is, if you have children, you're supposed to do what? Instruct them, right? Remember I said there's a couple of ways you could teach? By telling them and by examples, right? And that comes along with discipline too, sis. Read. Hast thou children? Instruct them. Read. And bow down their neck? from their youth. Uh -huh. Has thou daughters? Has thou what? Has thou daughters? Three. Have a care of their body uh -huh. and show not thyself cheerful toward them. So how should a father in the house be? And show not thyself cheerful toward them. You ain't leaving the house dressed like that. That's what a father's gonna do. A father that loves his daughter because you know what a father knows? How a nigga thinks. Does that make sense? Okay, so now if that sister don't have that at home, what is she missing? She's missing that authority that's going to guide her in the right direction. You understand? Now, give me that in Sirach 42. I'm going to show you. The book of Sirach, chapter 42 and verse 9. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, and the care for her Take it the way sleep. And the what? And the care for her take it the way sleep. Knowing that we live in perilous times, a man will lose sleep wondering about the care of his daughter, wondering about her safety. Because under the watchful eyes of her mother, who a lot of times trying to be her friend, she loses all that discipline. Read. And the care for her taketh away sleep. Uh -huh. When she is young, lest she pass away the flower of her age. Uh -huh. And being married, lest she should be hated. And her virginity, lest she should be defiled. And gotten with child in her father's house. So it says, in her virginity, in her youth, listen to this again. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled. And gotten with child in her father's house. It said that she should be defiled and become pregnant while she's still living under her father's roof, meaning she ain't married yet. Now, you've been to church before? You've heard these scriptures in church, right? Yes, I've read them. You, you've read these scriptures? So what's the problem? With how you're living and how the rest of our sisters are living. Because we see the examples. Listen, sis, we see the examples. That's why the brother bought out Kiki Palmer earlier. Kiki Palmer trying to give marriage advice. How the hell she gonna give somebody marriage advice? She ain't even married. Right. Does that make sense? But listen, in today's society, somehow that makes sense. What's happened, sis? I want, I want you to tell me what's happened to our people. Give me that folly you said, very dignity. What's happened to our people? It's a bit, like, you shouldn't take advice. Okay, I agree with that. 
If she doesn't want to be married, so then you know what? Remember we just read that the age woman should teach the younger woman how to love their children? She don't love her child. She don't love her child. Because God didn't set up for a woman only to raise a child. Nation is men leading by example.